Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Only Truth Podcast. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this episode, for showing me some love and some support. I love it. And today's video, I don't want to waste any time because we cannot be wasting any time. So if you can't see from the title of this video, we are going to be talking about the fact that we need to wake up and we need to rise up. I have so much to say about this topic and I just have so much passion for it. So I'm not going to be able to fit everything in this video that I want to address, but I do plan on making other videos around this topic because this needs to be talked about. Um, so in this video, I am going to be addressing just some stuff that has been happening in the public eye that we can't be ignoring or excusing or just brushing it off. This needs to be talked about. So I'm going to be talking specifically just about what happened regarding the opening of the Paris Olympics. I want to talk about the importance of realizing that spiritual warfare is a very real thing and how that applies to politics, the government, um, how that applies to what we are seeing unfolding in front of our eyes, and a little bit about the end times and how this is a time where we need to stay sober-minded. We need to stay alert because we are truly watching history just unfold in front of our eyes. God wants us to stay alert, stay awake, don't be deceived. But remind yourself of the truth and what God's word says because there is going to be a time where Jesus is going to come back. So I want to first just start this off by saying there has been so much happening in the public eye, just demonic wise, um, just pure evil. And the devil is obviously not being silent. And I am not going to be silent either. And before I start this video, I want to read a specific verse. And this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. I need some seltzer. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's always a seltzer usually by me because I think I'm getting old because I used to be like, Mom, why are you drinking seltzer all the time? And now I'm literally always having a seltzer by me. And I'm like, I'm turning into my mother. Anyways, so 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18 is talking about the wisdom of God. And it says, The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. And then it goes on to say in verses 20 through 21, So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. And then jumping to verse 25, it says, This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans, and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. So I wanted to read that because... I don't know if you are a believer or not, but you could be watching this or listening to this and you could be like, nah, that's, this stuff is weird. This is foolish. Like y'all, you Christians are crazy, whatever. Like it literally says it in the Bible that it is going to seem foolish to you if you do not have the spirit of God in you, if you are not a Christian, if you are not a believer, then the word of God, the truth of God is going to sound foolish to you. And so I just want to encourage you to maybe just take that as a challenge if you are in that boat. And if you're like, what's this girl talking about? Like, like look it up yourself, do some digging, you know, and stick around and I just encourage you to listen to this because I believe that this message 
is so important in our generation and in the timeline of history, not my message specifically, what I'm saying like in this podcast, but in general, the message of Christ and the truth is so important to be spoken about right now. And so I just encourage you to keep listening. So I really do believe that this is a call to non-believers to wake up, ask God to remove the veil from you and to understand the saving power of his son, Jesus, as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says to call on God while he is near to seek him while he can still be found because the truth is there is going to be a time where God is not going to be near anymore. He's not going to hear your cries anymore. He's not going to be able to save you anymore, but we are living in the time where we are able to, we are able to turn to God. God is inviting us all throughout the pages of scripture, throughout Christians that he places in your life, throughout this message right now, God is calling you to an invitation to salvation. And when that time has come that he is not near anymore and you have decided to reject the invitation you are going to regret with everything inside of you that you did not accept that invitation. And I know that I'm being a little bit blunt, but I don't want to sugarcoat any of this because honestly, Jesus did not sugarcoat. He was very blunt about eternity. And yeah, so we don't have time to be wasting around here. So with that being said, I want to read from the passage in Ephesians chapter 6, and this is the chapter that really just hones in on spiritual warfare, what that means, what that is. Um, This is so important to know. So I'm just going to read some verses to you guys to make you aware of what is actually going on. And this, you know, we can't see with our own eyes the other spiritual realm, but that doesn't make it any less real than it is. It is as real as this realm is right here. So it says in Ephesians chapter six, starting at verse 10 to 13, I want to read. It says a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Paul just, boom, throws that on us. And it's like, so Paul's literally saying, we are not fighting against humans. Like that's what it looks like in the physical realm. But reality is we are in a spiritual warfare where there is demonic evil spirits versus the kingdom of God, the light, and they are opposing each other. They are constantly fighting against each other. And that is what we can't physically see, but that is what is behind things unfolding in history. You know, it is the spiritual realm that is influencing these things. And it also says in the Bible that the devil is the ruler of this world. He's the present ruler of this world. Not for long though, like calm down. Um, but because God has literally created the devil. So like, and we already know what the devil's end result is because it literally says it in scripture, in the book of revelation, what is his fate? So, but with that being said, The devil right now, his scheme is to turn as many people as he can against God. So now I want to talk about the Paris Olympics incident. So honestly, I did not want to even watch it. I don't even want to see that. Um, 
And there has been other things where like, you know, I've seen a snippet of it and I'm like, I don't even want my eyes to see this. Like it's straight up evil. But with the Paris Olympics, basically, there was a direct mockery happening of Jesus and Christianity. And the mockery itself was based on the Last Supper, which if you don't know the Last Supper, it is basically Jesus declaring to his disciples that he is going to die for the sins of this world um, and that he is that he is the Messiah, he's going to be ascending to heaven soon and that he is going to suffer, but he, you know, and it's his last meal with them before all of these prophecies take place. And I haven't spoken about other things that have happened in Hollywood, in the public eye, just, you know, at Grammys and everything, performances of huge celebrities and public figures who people just, you know, love their music. The devil's not even hiding anymore. And he's using those people as influences for the kingdom of darkness. Um, Like straight up mockery of Jesus, the cross of Christ, is not even hidden. It's not even like subliminal anymore. Like they're straight up just coming directly for Jesus. Okay, but my thing is, you're coming at Jesus and Christianity, the cross, so hard. Why not any other religion? Can you imagine what would happen if they were coming for a different type of religion? The mockery that they have been displaying against Jesus? But why is it just about Jesus? Why is he the target? of this religious mockery. He is a target because he is the only truth. He is the only Messiah. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through him. And the devil knows that. The kingdom of darkness knows that. So what are they going to do? They are going to mock him. They are going to try to make the world reject that message, reject that person because they don't want people knowing the truth. And so that is why Jesus is being directly targeted in public is because we do not wage war against flesh and blood. And also because the darkness, the dark realm, they know that Jesus is the answer to everything. He is the way to life. He carries eternal life with him. He carries right relationship with the father with him. And the devil does not want anyone to be made right with God. So I wrote down the devil's agenda versus God's. So I said, the devil wants to deceive as many people as he can to believe that evil is good and good is evil which is found in the Bible. It's scripture that says that the days are coming where evil will be considered good and good will be considered evil. Um, He wants to separate humans from God, not only now, but for eternity. He wants humans in hell. What is hell? Hell is a place of extreme torture eternally. There is no pleasure at all in hell. And that is where the devil wants you to go with him. That is what he is trying to deceive the world into. Thinking is good. The devil does not care about you. In fact, he hates you. Because you are an image bearer of God. And because God has created you and you are made You are literally made in God's image. He knows that what he's doing is evil and he twists what is good. But it's not even because he wants us to be happy or to have pleasure. It's because he's straight up evil and he wants us to be separated from God. Like he literally has no good intentions for anyone. But Jesus... Here's the good part. 
but Jesus willingly dies for the sins of humanity, rises up after three days, and defeats death, hell, and the grave. And whoever accepts his sacrifice as Lord and Savior, they are made right with God now and eternally into a glorious and eternal paradise. Jesus says to the thief on the cross, seconds before he was about to die, the thief recognizes him as the Messiah while he is being crucified. And Jesus says to him, truly, I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus loves you so much and he wants you to be with him. He wants you to have a right relationship with him now and for eternity. And literally, he would have died if it was just for you. And he died such a horrific death for you. Before you even knew him, before you even loved him back, he died for you because he wants you to be eternally with him. He wants you to have life and have life to the full. When it says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, it says that Jesus came to give life and to give it to the full. The devil is not for you. God is for you. And I want to read this verse in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. It says, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. We need to wake up and stand firm for the truth. Because the truth is, the time of the end is getting less and less. And we need to stand up for the truth. We need to expose the devil and his deceitfulness and his lies trying to get souls over to him when the truth is that God wants nothing more than for us, than for his creation to be reconciled to him. And by rejecting his plan of salvation, then we are rejecting God himself. And that is what the devil is trying to skew people away from. So I want to read from the book of Revelation chapter 12 verses 10 through 11. It says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuse them before our God day and night. And they, the brethren, overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. This is the enemy's fate. The accuser of our brethren is cast down. But for those who loved not their lives, that stood firm on the truth, we will overcome. We have, we have overcome. We can be so cushioned in America and just with the messages that we portray and what's most important in the Christian life when I just feel that God is really opening my eyes to what is truly important and what we need to be keeping our focus on and our gaze on, you know, to not be distracted by the little things in life, like having, you know, the perfect family or, you know, having the perfect home or the American dream. Like we are here because we are here to make disciples of all nations. We are to proclaim the truth of the gospel. We are not to stay hidden. With that being said, obviously we are to be kind and compassionate and gentle as doves, but it also says shrewd as snakes. So we are meant to be a light to others, to proclaim the truth in love. And I don't believe that it is loving to know this truth and to not tell people about it. This is their eternity that we're talking about. This is their souls that we're talking about. And this needs to get put out there. And whether or not people think it's foolish, that is on them. But God is inviting us to rise up, to wake up, to stand firm for the truth and to bring others to that truth. And so I hope that this just gave you a type of freshness 
about what is really going on here, you know, that you would just be zoned out of your life right now, what's going on, and that you would set your eyes on the bigger picture, the picture of history unfolding and humanity. Like, it is so important. And I just encourage you to seek the Lord in this. Pray that you won't be deceived. Pray that you won't be distracted and to stand firm in the truth. Anyways, so I know that that was a bit of a heavy episode today. It's just been so heavy on my heart that I just, I just needed to record this. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting this podcast. If you did enjoy, if you feel like someone needs to hear this, I encourage you to send it to a friend, send it to someone who might need to hear this specific message in this certain season that they are going through. And as always, I hope that you guys have an amazing and blessed and beautiful day. And I'll see you in my next episode. Thank you.